Allow me to directly quote with clarity and precision the late Harry Patch, the last surviving soldier of World War I. Pause. Forgive me if he's not passed on yet. I, I thought I'd heard that, but if he's not, please don't sue me. <clears throat> and I quote, War is organized murder and nothing else. Hello and namaste, greetings and salutations. Welcome one and all. I judge not, I only humbly invite, encourage, and suggest that you lay aside any and all preconceived notions, assumptions, ideological constructs, etc. at the door before sitting down in this shared, conceptualized mental space of the imagination that we inadvertently or consciously create when we come together as host and audience. Namaste, mofos. I am your jubilant and, of course, self-admittedly eccentric host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. It is Friday, February 26th, uh, and it's a a relatively bright and early 9.48 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you for tuning in. If I may be so bold as to add one clause... Because I realize that for I don't know how long, I've probably been misattributing my version of that quote I just read to you to kick off the, the opening bit. Um, I always say, I've long said to people, point blank, when you know the appropriate contextual opportunity arises in conversation and or public discourse... That war is organized murder for profit. Sometimes I go on to add some additional thoughts about how it's used to distract people from the spiritual calling to heal oneself, to facilitate the healing of others in order to manifest the collective species-wide healing of all of humanity. I don't always bring that up because people often interrupt me to tell me how wrong I am and spew at me their preferred talking points about why this person or that place are righteously justified in pursuing this war or that conflict, etc. Holy moly, um, has it been a whirlwind 36 hours? Uh, Although I technically set this up as a Good Morning Trumptopia episode, um, uh, it's it's really going to be mostly about the world at large. But I, it is, there's a deep concern of mine that's rooted in the Trumptopian phenomena slash the Trumptopian movement 
here uh, in these grand old United States of ours that directly answers the question many Americans seem to be casually asking themselves, why should I give a flying fuck about whatever the bloody hell is going on over there between Ukraine and Russia? But but hold on to that. We'll, we'll come back to that a little bit uh, later on in the show. Let's um, let's recap uh, because I realize some people may not be aware of what's going on. Other people may be preoccupied with something else. Some people may be convinced of an alternative narrative about what's going on. Let's agree to try and recap what we know is actually physically happened and try to avoid too much speculation if possible. There's a, and I feel it's a bit too soon, but it is delightfully funny. And I'm kind of tempted to dig it up and, and read it, share it with you all. But there is a sort of uh, dark rom-com interpretive dance narrative that to catch people up. Ah, damn, I'm like half curious to see if I can just magically find it. Um, okay, that's a special sort of doesn't make any sense that I just, the first thing I see on, um, when I open this particular social media platform, and I'm not trying to troll anybody because that's explicitly against the rules. Um, I am wanting to talk about this following idea that's apparently going to start or is percolating around the interwebs. And you know how things go. The closer to the edge of um, hyper extreme over the top conspiracy theory you get, the faster and looser they get with their attributions and whatnot. But apparently, you you y'all might come across this because it seems to be f- bouncing across the interwebs, and um, I don't. I don't agree with this. I'm not stating it. Actually, I don't even want to touch it right now. I need to sit on this and think about it for a hot second. And I also want to dabble in responding to where the to the individual that I'm seeing this on. So I got I got to wait on that. I digress. Some sorry the pro, you know the rough and tumble edges of me being a genuine, authentic. Um, amateur in the most polite sense of the term and not the snobby elitist smug down the nose judgmental version of the word and if you don't know the distinction my dear friends that's what dictionaries are for um because words should be as concrete as we can possibly build consensus well rather the definitions for words should be as concrete um and as um, objective as we can muster the consensus for, whilst always acknowledging that language is common use, whether you want to realize that that's a thing or not, um, and that this universe is a relativistic place. And yes, objectivism and relativism, no, sorry, that implies the ideologies. Objectivity, whatever that is, before we labeled it with words, in nature. And relativism, whatever that is, before we labeled it in words, as it exists in nature, the two, in my humble opinion, although this seems to irritate the fuck out of materialists, they are not mutually exclusive. In fact, they, like up and down, and left and right, are co-creative in a fashion, or at least paradoxically mutually self, uh, mutually arising uh, oxymorons, which sound paradoxical, uh, but perhaps aren't. And maybe we need to reevaluate what paradoxes are. Speaking of paradoxes, welcome to today's episodes, for which I don't know why I found a bunch of alliteration flowing from my my mind. Preemptive Pretext Paradox, episode 445. Cover art, um, artist unknown for the heart, but it's obviously trending all over. The words, though, are mine as I found that with something else on it that was in, I presume, Ukrainian, which I can't read, 
and no one would offer me a translation for it. So not being sure what it said, I decided to collaborate with the previous meme uh, craftsperson and uh, and make a remix, as I like to call it, um, as s- others in the industry actually like to call it. But I digress, I digress, I digress. Um, the, the image is, of course, a crayon sketch a doodle heart that has the colors of the Ukrainian flag in a sort of harsh horizontal cut across it. Um, it's, it's kind of interestingly blunt on, on that figure. Um, and the words that I added is the world stands with the Ukrainian people. Now, why do I bring that up earlier? While I was trying to wrap my brain around whatever new developments have, are, is are you know are being talked about in all the various ways and platforms that I sort of try to check in, and by no means do I pretend uh, that I have exhaustive sources, and by no means do I pretend to be writing a freaking doctoral thesis paper, um, which would necessitate me having annotated fucking sources for every little ifing thing. I don't. I apologize. The moment I've got capital income and the capacity to be a job creator, and I only share this so that you can facilitate me in the manifesting of it, join me in in not, not magical wishful thinking of it, but bringing it into existence through the power of will and mind and conscious, focused, manifesting attention. The moment I can be a job creator, I will happily, gladly uh, take on um, interesting, intelligent, um, equivalently groovy, not necessarily explicitly like identical minded, but definitely not sort of so diametrically opposed we couldn't get along kind of folks um, to facilitate that task of like hyper annotating everything. So that every time someone goes, well, where are you, blah, 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 what are your sources? I can be like, think, 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 instead of like, bro, I'm not, you're not my university professor, and I, this isn't a fucking doctoral thesis setting. I'm not gonna, you know, like, you got the internet, I got the internet. Let's not fucking, if I'm asking someone for their sources, it's because I don't know where they're getting it from. I haven't come across it yet. And I tried a quick search to try and find it and didn't figure out the right keywords for. And I'm not sort of dubiously, instantly doubting their um, their validity. I just want to see it, right? Um, but some people just use demanding of sources as a sort of slap you in the tit and make your eyes water so then you can't focus and concentrate sort of maneuver. And it's like, come on, y'all. Where are we? Junior high playground or like adult public discourse. I digress. There's nothing wrong with having a little fun. Um, so this morning, I was preparing my thoughts, etc., and sort of wrapping my head around today's new slate of what the fuckery and um, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I was like, you know what? This has escalated to the point. And mind you, pause, sidebar. Holy effing war machine That escalated quickly from a suspiciously minimalistic... No, wait, pardon, if you go far back enough, in their own words, from a, oh, no, no, it's nothing, it's just standard uh, wargaming, you know, training exercises, to it's just a, a minimal impact neutral peacekeeping mission in this small localized part way over here to a coast-to-coast blitzkrieg of targeted bombing and um, pincer-like. My words fail because I'm not a tactician, right? But, like, they definitely... It just escalated quickly. Uh, And now we've got, of course, a humanitarian crisis on the border and all the usual trappings of a conflict that will, I mean, in living memory, is already flirting the closest anything has gotten to truly being officially and unavoidably like, okay, for reals, it's World War III now status. 
despite the fact that personally, as I've mentioned before on this podcast, as I've tried to bring to people's attention on the social medias, I'm of the mind that, um, hello, that's why I've got the <clears throat> awkward meanwhile in Yemen, Syria, and various other countries, um, you know, if we just sort of stop pretending or stop um, limiting uh, our awareness to, like, you know, what war is and how much of it is going on in the world, it's easy to say. One could make a strong argument for World War Three has been going on for quite some time. We just really, you know, refuse to let ourselves acknowledge it as such and, and, and lean into it. <clears throat> but I digress. Where was I? Oh, I, um, I crafted, I made myself this collaborative you know, I found the heart. I, I tried to find a translation for what Bloody Hell it says. Um, so far, although I, I've probably missed it, the person I asked, I don't think ever caught my question and hasn't responded, and it's fine. The internet is a time-independent dude. It doesn't matter, and I no one owes me anything, right? Like, I don't sit around waiting for people to reply, and I sure as hell don't sit around waiting um, uh, to, like, spring my replies it's catch as catch can, you know. Some people take the the sparring sport of public discourse a little too seriously. Um, and they take themselves a little too seriously. And then, of course, you know, quite traditionally and to be expected, project it on everyone else that it's everyone else taking themselves way too seriously. Um, but I made this thing. And I made it with slightly... I made it with slightly different wording, right? Whatever you call it, this meme, this... Um, this I stand with profile pick. Um, and I, the, the, the first draft that I made and posted, bless it, I post, I was eager to get it out there and I didn't stop and really, really sort of let it simmer, right? And, and let my brain think about it without thinking about it. I think I would have gone, oh, wait, hold on, let me, let me reword this. But I wrote it with, I, I wrote it as the world stands with Ukraine. Because I liked it was like, you know, brevity. That's my my Achilles tendon. I, I just can't with the brevity. I'm, it, it never comes to me in brevity. And that was about as brevity as I could get it. Um, so I posted it and immediately, like I didn't even get around to like making my cup of coffee at that point yet, right? Um, my next cup of coffee. I'd already gone into my first cup of coffee, which... Wait, no, I'm not going to talk about the coffee issue here. We'll get all distracted. There's a pin on the corkboard about coffee at large, irregardless of whatever other context we've been discussing um, and my feelings about it. So have fun with that. But, you know, identify the pin and then move, you know, let's let's move on. Um, almost immediately, people jumped onto the comment bandwagon about how uh, Ukraine's the wrong side to be standing with because X, Y, and Z. And then others because of, you know, W, J, K, and L, whatever. Various reasons, all of which would be tedious to get into at large. And that doesn't mean I'm, I don't, I'm not aware of them or that I haven't heard, of, heard them before. Um, it's just that, like, I want to get to what they've got in common, not so much what makes them all weirdly different. Uh, but see, where where I where I <clears throat> as you know, what am I trying to say? Where I beg to differ with everyone that came at me was like, oh, no, the Ukraine's the wrong place. Don't you know that they're this and this corruption in their government? And I'm like, bro, dude, tell me, name me one government that doesn't have corruption and other problematic issues with it. Show me one country where there aren't people calling each other Nazis and other names. That's not the point. The people of Ukraine I don't see any evidence, and maybe I'm not looking hard enough. You know, that's entirely possible. I'm a bit scatterbrained, and 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 uh, although I love discussing world events and politics, um, my 
my higher passions, my deeper passions do tend towards the more art, artsy fartsy side of things. It's a constant struggle. But um, as of yet, and I'm sure there's plenty of content I've yet to review, which I should the do I should do the due diligence on. And I'm not in any way, shape, or form pretending to have summarily judged as invalid. Um, but from what I know and what I've read from from the horse's mouth, mind you. Not an independent source over here with a, a particular take on things. Not the mainstream media. Not the right-wing media. Not the left-wing media. Not the Western media. Not the orthodox media. The horse's mouth. The perpetrators and those upon which this is being perpetrated on. I've yet to see any real tangible evidence for the pretextual argument being used to rationalize and justify and even glorify this preemptive military strike. Now, some would say, well, it's not preemptive. They've been at war for eight years. And I'm like, hmm, there's been a longstanding ceasefire after a weird, disruptive uprising conducted quite plain, painfully, obviously, by, quote, Russian-backed separatists, which the best of my understanding means Russia's paying them to go in there and, and, and raise hell and cause problems and, and muddy the waters and fight against who, you know, Ukraine and, 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 uh, and, and introduce the, the very idea that, uh, that there's some dispute there. Um, I keep asking people, because I'm amazed. Uh, let me back up. I'm amazed, shocked, and yet somehow there's also a part of me that's like so taciturn, so jaded, that I'm profoundly numb and not surprised in any way, shape, or form. That there are so many people jumping on interestingly varied array of bandwagons in an attempt to justify what's going on and even praise the aggressor. Now, I don't know about everybody else, but I don't care about the corruption and which government is the most corrupt? Because I mean, it's a, it's it's a pretty pervasive problem, yo. Even amongst you know the polite civil societies that run around constantly patting themselves on the back for being the quote unquote good guys, I am not so naive, dear friends. Although people love to tell me that I am all the time, mostly because I'm fairly certain they assume that I haven't been uh, impartially observing world events, not as a self-proclaimed authoritative expert in any way, shape, or form about anything other than my own lived experience. Um, but this aggression... Should not stand, man, to, to quote the dude or to mis, misquote the dude, right? Is it, this aggression shall not stand? And maybe he doesn't say man? I don't remember. I have to rewatch that movie you now. Uh, now I instantly am totally distracted by the fact that I know I have the meme in my collection where it says, uh, the first time I watched The Big Lebowski, and it's, it's Lebowski's face looking up, you know, in that one scene where he's looking up and he's just like, wah! And then the 100th time or the 10,000th time, whatever it is, that I've seen the Ben Lebowski and it's the exact same. That's me. Uh, I digress. I digress. I digress. For clarity, I made the new version of the meme that caused such an uproar on my 
on one of my social media uh, profiles. Surprisingly, on other platforms, not so much. Just this one, though. Um, And curiously... And I need to play some music, aren't I? I'm just, I'm just drifting away, aren't I, with the, with the time structure I, I was going to shoot for. But at least it's 10-10. Presumably the universe says, you're right on track, bro. Uh, although I'm sure there's much more complex interpretations of what 10-10 means. In shorthand, it means at least that for sure. Because it's a synchronicity number. But I digress, I digress, I digress. I'm shocked and amazed, although cynically not so surprised at all whatsoever and kind of expected it, to see so many people, so many self-proclaimed freedom fighters root for the team that's making up excuses for themselves to move in, objectify, hypervilify, and then murder everyone who runs that country, which has been, presumably, trying to overcome its own problematic issues to strive, like all nations in theory, when they're being their best, strive to be a more perfect union, to borrow and and apply the American specific, you know, terminology and, and with some, with some graciousness extended to all those that do indeed pat themselves on the back and pretend to cosplay being the good guy all the time. Um, because no friends, I, I'm not so naive as to think that any, uh, organized human endeavor that large and with that much obvious, corruptive influences on it is some shining beacon of absolute moral rectitude. But then again, I'm not so naive as to believe that anyone claiming to be that actually is that, which is the the reason why I can't agree with a bunch of people out there. Um... I stand with the civilian people of any place, anywhere, that are being butchered, whose lives are being disrupted and destroyed, whose safety and security are being um, ripped apart for any reason for any rationalization in order to engage in an activity that categorically for quite some time now I've been publicly declaring is essentially no matter how you slice it or no matter how much you rationalize it organized murder for profit. And while obviously self-defense is self-defense someone comes at you Defend yourself. Um, I think that's exactly the position that the Ukrainian people find themselves in. Uh, but I digress. I said I was going to play some music before I, I wandered off for way too long. And I totally just kept steaming away. Dear friends, the very patient and um, and talented animatronic DJ Z bringing you Robotica Dance Synthetica audio entertainment from another dimension here's a little robot dance ditty he has entitled Unnerving, never ending endingness.
Do you feel like cranking it up and rocking out to this or one of the other scintillating DJ Z audio entertainment audio tracks? And by all means, indulge. Support his animatronic ass and head on over to soundcloud.com forward slash Mr. Zeppo where you can tune in and listen to all the music of the Zeppoverse. Vote for your favorites, click on things, share the things, etc., etc., etc. You know what, DJ said? I really like that one. I think I'm going to keep that one here for show rotation. Uh, and I'm definitely going to be making sure that it's in over for the stream, too. I, I'm really, really digging that one. All right, um, folks, welcome back. Let me... Let me clarify something. <clears throat> For those of you who may be new or, or just uh, haven't heard me say this before, I don't pretend to have knowledge that somehow other people don't have. I don't pretend to be an expert. I don't pretend to be 100% infallibly certain. I don't pretend to have some some uh, exclusive grip on some kind of absolute truth. And I, I'm quite intuitively prompted to question and be wary about anyone who makes such claims. Okay, moving on. So plenty of things are up in the air and perhaps open for debate. Uh, But from, from the way I'm looking at things, from my perspective, one thing seems to be for sure and for certain. Uh, Everyone is about to find out which of their social media acquaintances are pro- religious, ethno-nationalist, autocratic, empire-building Putin sympathizers, and which ones are what I like to call, quote, everything deniers or everything hoaxers. Because this, uh, this particular scenario seems to got them all worked up and crawling out of the woodwork. Uh, welcome, one and all, dear friends. I don't judge. I just ask you why. Why are you choosing that? Right? I'm not here to hate on anybody. No matter what I choose to believe, dear friends, let me r- assure you, I'm quite, uh, I'm quite presently aware at all times that there is free will in the universe. And that any given individual and or community of folks has the power to choose to believe in anything. And I have next to little to no control. But I do have my voice. And I do have my ability to assert that I reject things I cannot pledge my consent to, that I cannot, in good conscience, lend my power of belief to, and that my God-given free will and my, in theory, still government-protected free speech rights And never mind that. Forget that part. My God-given free will, which includes inherently free speech, uh, allows me to do so, especially since um, I'm not nefariously plotting to cause others harm or facilitate the causing of harm with the things I choose to express. In fact, I would argue I'm trying to achieve quite the opposite. 
Um, I've talked about this before in the show. So it, this is a pin on the corkboard, but it's a big one and it's important to me. And I was forced, not forced, the situation and the flow of this thread on this particular um, image that I posted earlier ultimately f led me to feel like it was necessary to put this in writing for, I don't know what, the umpteenth time here in this context. Because clearly the people that were participating in this discourse here under this image weren't aware of the fact that this is part of my thinking. So um, if it sounds like I'm reading from something, it's because I am. I'm reading from the post. I might also just interject as I often do and start extemporizing as new ideas filter in. But allow me to read something I had to post to people earlier because they really were just like not, not comprehending that I can't, I cannot take their side given that from my perspective, it looked like they were siding with the aggressor here. And that they were accusing me of propping up an illegitimate government. And I'm like, I'm not siding with any government. I'm siding with the people. Okay? So, I, I then had to ask the following. Here's, here's the bit I want to read. Quote, let me ask you something. In all seriousness... Because there's been a lot of talk about Nazis and neo-Nazis, both in the hyperbolic people calling other people Nazis, even though they're not kind of way, and in the this is the reason why it's okay that he's doing it kind of way, and in the hybrid mishgas that you get when you blend those two together kind of way. What Here's my question. What was it that made the original Nazis so effing villainous that it was worth having a world war about? And mind you, if I, if I had been alive back then, I probably would have been an early and obnoxious squeaky wheels saying hey this guy he sounds a little wacky and uh, his rationale for annexing that little chunk of that other country doesn't make any fucking sense to me and although they're not very exact there are some echoes here between then and now as i'm sure uh, some people have 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 realized and or have had pointed out to them but what was it like let's just let's not pretend to be historical experts here i'm not I know that plenty of people out there are actual World War II buffs and can easily get involved and start nitpicking about proving I don't know what I'm talking about by challenging me to spew a bunch of nitty-gritty facts and figures that I don't have ready at my disposal. But that's not what this is about. Let's talk big picture, plain and simple. What made the original Nazis so villainous that it was worth having a fucking world war about. In my humble opinion, I think it is the following thing. And it's simple. And yes, everything I say, everything I say is backed up with the, like, with the little asterisks of, yeah, I realize I could be totally wrong, yo. But to the best of my understanding, here's where I'm at. At the core of what happened there, Setting aside all the other, like, political, ideological drama. Oh, why did it crank out dramaturgy? I don't think I said dramaturgy. <clears throat> that was going on. The Nazi ideology that people got indoctrinated with manipulated them into objectifying and dehumanizing and hyper-vilifying designated others in order to justify taking criminal actions against them in the name of justice, peace, security, 
Whatever the fuck. Now let me be clear. I hear the claims about neo-Nazis running Ukraine. I, I was watching live at whatever the fuck o'clock in the morning before dawn when uh, the president of the Russian Federation played his previously recorded pretending to be live um, announcement that he had approved for himself vis-a-vis -vis his rubber stamping system of self-approving government a military uh, action on foreign soil. He quite casually slipped in as if it was a fucking plain, old-fashioned, well-accepted, obvious as the, the pimple on your nose, in the light of day, commonly recognized fact that there were neo-Nazis in Ukraine and he was out to de nazify them, presumably, through murder. And like I just said, I don't know. I don't see any reason to think that there are Nazis running Ukraine. To the best of my understanding, the current president, whose name I could not even begin to try to pronounce correctly because I would just butcher it and feel like an idiot and spend way too much time and get distracted by that. But the president, to the best of my understanding, and of course quite limited. I'm, it's not like I can go out and verify everything personally, right? At least not yet. Not without a bunch of investment money and a bit of support staff and shit. Um, but to the best of my understanding, he's of Jewish descent and I'm going to guess that if this is true, this is a matter of easily verifiable historical record. Both of his grandfathers fought in the war against the... I think fought and died fighting the Nazis. Um, here's what I do know, though, right? Like, for sure. Much more solidly than anything else. I'm not going to... If I don't know it, I'm not going to pretend to know it, my friends. What I do know is that when any group... And I'll just... I, I think in the post, I, yes, I, I've worded it, we... That when we murder murderers for murdering, we become murderers ourselves. Now, people from all kinds of political backgrounds balk at that. Is that how you pronounce that word? It's one of those words I haven't really heard anyone pronounce in a really long time. And I think the last time I heard it, it was pronounced, it was on like some sort of English period drama. So it wasn't even in American. It was in like highfalutin, fancy schmancy British talk sounds. So I don't really know how to pronounce that word. But there's an A and a U and an L and a K. And it reminds me of that meme about being at the Home Depot store and needing to pronounce that silent L so carefully. But I digress. And I repeat for emphasis, as far as I'm concerned, when we, collectively speaking, because I certainly have never murdered anyone and fuck off anyone who's going to try and blatantly accuse me of having done so. Um, when a group of people, which we can, let, we can collectively all refer to as we, in theory, murder a murderer, for murdering other people, we, or that group of people that chose to exact revenge, vengeance, instead of justice, become murderers themselves. Anti-Nazi rhetoric is popular, but also blatantly and inappropriately calling people you disagree with a Nazi is way too ridiculously normalized. And also, there are real neo-Nazis that some of the same people making the argument that Putin is out there to kill neo-Nazis spend a lot of time denying. 
So ain't none of that shit making sense to me, yo. And even if, okay, I don't, like I said, I don't know. But let's pretend, for argument's sake, theoretically, that we lived in a universe where, oh my god, holy fuck, yes indeed. As crazy as it sounds, half-Jewish president whose grandfathers both fought and died against the Nazis is actually secretly a neo-Nazi himself, etc. I'm still quite certain that if we, the supposedly quote-unquote self-identified good guys, whoever that is, I'm not pretending to be that myself right now, I'm just saying whoever the good guys are, I'm quite certain if the good guys, quote-unquote, lower themselves and engage in the low, the level of villainy that they are persecuting and prosecuting the, quote-unquote, villains for, well, then we become villains ourselves. They become villains themselves. That's my beef with war, folks. That's why I can't agree to any of the various rationalizations being thrown around that seem to be getting pitched at me to be like, oh yeah, I should, you should support this guy. He's doing the right thing. Right? Like, if Italy suddenly decided to invade Greece because Nazis, I'd be like, so, to solve the Nazi problem, you've become Nazis. And I, I've yet to find anyone's attempt to change my mind on that successful. People keep coming at me with really interesting attempts to rationalize that. I mean, that's just like, really, guys? Seriously? People are out there trying to convince those who are choosing to stand with the people of Ukraine... That the individual responsible for a preemptive military strike, the person responsible for illegally annexing a chunk of this sovereign nation's territory, a person responsible for paying mercenaries to infiltrate, disrupt, and foment a half-assed separatist movement, and then break ceasefires all the time, a person who is a known former master spy, a person who is probably, I'm speculating here on this part, a, a, quite skilled in designing PSYOP, a person who, based on things I've read that he has written, is a self-proclaimed autocratic religious ethno-nationalist dictator or tyrant that seems to be pursuing again based on his own words did you guys read the op-ed he posted he seems to be pursuing a pseudo-religious empire resuscitation, no, empire rebuilding uh, messianic syndrome, man. Like, you trying to get me to, to support that? Really? That's about, I mean, I. that's about as silly as when people, which some of this seems to be crossover people, I obviously could be wrong, and I don't mean to conflate where conflation shouldn't be happening, but I wasn't buying it when people were trying to convince me that an orange-tanned, two-faced, hypocritical, manipulative, megalomaniacal con artist grifter was Christianity's last hope to save Christ's America. Sorry, I was never going to pay good money for that bullshit. That's a load of malarkey. Uh, 
some folks during that conversation accused me of turning a blind eye to, quote unquote, my own government's problematic issues. Little do they know that I'm quite obnoxiously vociferous about the problematic issues that I perceive in the double barrel echo chamber political uh, dumpster fire train wreck that is the two party system. If I didn't invent, because I don't know, maybe I didn't invent it, I was certainly a really early adopter of hashtag two wings, one bird. And I've been asking critical questions of like, why is it the two parties pretend to fight each other, but then sort of wink, wink, nudge, nudge, help each other get away with some of the crazy shit that the other parties don't want, you know, pretend to fight about since Ronald Reagan was in office. I don't pretend to be an expert. I don't pretend to know everything, but here's something I do know. Preemptive military violence uh, I can't rationalize under any circumstances I can't rationalize it if this country that country the other country stood up one day and said hey world we're gonna go fuck up these guys over there because we're dead certain X, Y, and Z, and blah, 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 the reasons enough, just don't fucking get in our way, or we're going to blow you up too. I'm going to be standing with the people getting their asses whooped for no reason. Because some asshole wants to prove that they got the capacity to take over a country that they claim, by some divine gift right, should always belong in their ethno-religious empire. Um, because I'm categorically like anti-war as a solution to people's problems, right? Um, you've probably heard me say it before and bless it, you'll probably hear me say this again. 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, how many thousands of years worth of bloody violent war does it take before humanity goes, okay, that doesn't really solve anything. It just perpetuates more violence, sets up the new circumstances where the system's going to get oppressive and thereby inspire another revolution and the violence goes on and the profiteering continues and everyone's not capable of rallying to build consensus around rational, sane solutions for the problems, lo and behold, we all created for ourselves in the first place. Having said that, friends, I'm going to play you a second bit of music now to sort of cleanse the palate and come back to explore a slightly different angle on all of this Michigas. Here's Urgent Uprising Rally. A DJ said, UK Baseline Remix Live. Was this a live to tape or a studio edit? I don't remember. You didn't indicate. Here goes, friends. Enjoy. Thank you. 
Be sure to head on over to soundcloud.com forward slash Mr. Zeppo. Hit that follow button and share that love for all this robot dance discotheque synthetica. People defending this um, this invasion, this uh, this incursion, this assault, whatever you want to call it, this aggression. Um, like, there's any way to rationalize it, right? Like, even if there really were Nazis there, like we're just going to become Nazis, go in there and butcher them all, and then what? Hmm, I don't know. Karma is a Bitch, ain't it? Uh, let's put a pin on that whole, like, you know, do victims become like their uh, victimizers? Because, uh, yeah, man, trauma perpetuates trauma. Violence breeds violence. We're never going to solve the vicious cycle that way, dear friends. And I'm not the first to say it. Uh, but it just it really chaps my hide the names and the causes change the rationalizations and the strategery changes but and I don't know people call me crazy all the fucking time and try to invalidate the point that I make with the following statement um, but I don't I'm not buying any of that And so I stand by this statement. Every conflict has one thing in common. And it's not usually one of the things that people jump to. I think that the core thing that's most egregiously disgusting about what all conflicts have in common is that it does not matter which god, what country, or ideology you do your killing for. It's the weapons manufacturers and the military-industrial complex that profiteer with every killing, with every bit of conflict, with every uh, internal bit of civil strife, and with every multinational war, small, medium, or large. And it amazes me, people that will be like, this industry, that industry, they're all evil, 100% corrupt, they're the spawn of Satan, yada, 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 yada. I go, <clears throat> don't forget about the military industrial complex and the gun addiction industry because, you know, that's what they're really about. They're trying to profiteer on all that and they're like, you're insane. Shut the fuck up. Who's paying you to say that? I'm like, um, no one is. Just the fact that, I mean, here in America... People really want it to be like the Wild Wild West movies. Not Wild Wild West reality, where most towns and cities made you check your iron. And there were rules you had to follow. But Wild Wild West movies where it didn't get a fuck and you can just run around and shoot people whenever the fuck you feel like. For whatever the fuck problem you think they've caused. Without any fucking repercussions. I don't know about you friends, but that's cray cray. And there are people who want that. There are people who go to church strapped with iron, right? There are people who, there's a church where it isn't just, oh, they're gun friendly or they're in a state where carry conceal or they're in a state where open carry. No, no, no. There's a fucking church where everyone has a ceremonial, sanctified, blessed AK-47 for fuck's sake. There are Ramboified images of Christ And good grief, if dear Lord Jesus isn't fucking turning over in his grave, he's not, I know, because he's not there, right? But if he were, he'd be rolling over in his grave sick with, like, what the fuck are you doing? But that's a whole nother, we can do a whole nother episode about that. And that only just reminds me, um, (laughs) uh, the single most, uh, popular and most often downloaded or listened to episode of this podcast uh, of this particular show my podcast remains the yeshua christos episode and uh i gotta admit i don't even remember what the hell i 
talk about it in that episode anymore because it's been so long since it went up. I, I need to go back and listen to it again. Uh, but if you haven't heard it, go check it out and come on back to some of the newer episodes. I know this sounds like I'm just beating my face up against a brick wall, friends, but war will never end war. We will never end war by fighting. That's a meme I made but never posted. It's sitting around somewhere in the in the archives of my like, it's not quite right yet, but I need one more thing and I'll get it and then I forget. We will never end war by fighting. Uh, as I was pointing out in a recent episode, the very last one, I think, you know, the, the wisdom behind that age old adage about when it's, when the best time is to plant a tree, it's deeper than horticulture. It's deeper than, you know, uh, agriculture. It's deeper than, than just planning for the future. If instead of clinging to the ideologies that seduce us into us versus them, tribalistic, tribe versus tribe, zero sum, if you win, I lose, if if I win, you lose, sort of cognitive dissonance riddled thinking, we need to like rally around the clarity that war only benefits those who finance it. And it's, you know, surprise, surprise, people have been saying that for quite some time. I'm not the first and I doubt I will be the last to suggest that. And that if you find yourself getting worked up and needing to go, but those guys over there, they're the real super evil deluxe, absolutely monolithic darkness of evil over there. They're the spawn of Satan. These guys over here, whoever they are, stop, take a deep breath, and remind yourself, what is it that makes the bad guys the bad guys? They willingly choose to objectify dehumanize and hypervilify you in order to perpetuate crimes against you. So why the bloody hell would you engage in doing the same thing back to them? Even if it sounds real good on paper, why would you let yourself do that? I cannot, dear friends, and I humbly create space for others to join me in saying, yeah, dude, I can't do that. I don't care that these points and those points might be valid or seem to make sense. If this group think requires me to vilify, objectify, and dehumanize those Human beings over there, I need to step back and go, why the fuck is that an ingredient in the construct? Why is that an ingredient in this political party's platform? Why is that an ingredient in this article of faith you're asking me to pledge to? Why is that an ingredient in the religious dogma you're getting me to try to blindly believe in, etc., etc.? Etc. Why is that an ingredient in the justification you want me to swallow that's pretextual? And gives way to the perpetuation of more violence. We can stop wars as that adorable Stormtrooper meme reminds us. There's a really great Einstein quote slash meme that also gives us further guidance. Wars will end 
when our children are raised, and I'm so severely paraphrasing it, you might as well not say this, it's the right quote, but we will end wars when children are no longer raised to believe that there is honor in warfare. We will end war. I'm probably conflating a couple of different quotes here because I realize that something sounds off, but we will only end wars when when young men and women refuse to take marching orders and go butcher other people for the sake of some oligarch's power, for the sake of some empire's empire building, for the sake of some kleptocracies commodification and profiteering of natural resources. That's where I stand. That's why I stand with anybody and everyone who is getting shit dropped on their head. That's why I cannot give my consensus, my permission, my consent, my endorsement to anyone who says, I see this problem and I'll fix it by engaging in Organized murder. Can't do it. Oh, snap. Is that music still playing? I meant to take the music out. Darn it all. That probably sounded ridiculous. Sorry, folks. I was rambling there, and that music was playing over, and it may or may not have sounded appropriate. Womp womp. It may have even made it difficult to hear what I was saying, which is the worst. I suck at doing my own content creating. Um, in large part, that's because I can't afford to hire people to help me. But you can help fix that. Head on over to solo.to forward slash Mr. Zeppo and visit all the dimensions of the Zeppoverse and help this struggling content creator and live streamer Get to that place where this becomes the work-at-home job and I become a job creator. Please and thank you. Sorry to wind things up on a note of self-promotion, but the hustle is real, folks. As always, friends, despite the rough and tumble edges and the occasional... uh, uh, obnoxious technical error and or mistakery, I humbly, humbly thank you and express my deep and profound gratitude because you have a bazillion options for content to consume and you made time in your day, in your week, in your month, in your year to subscribe and join in this journey of Almost daily Zencast audio talk show podcast entertainment and public discourse. Don't forget about that part, folks. It isn't about me rambling and 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 a and a, an adoring audience just nodding along and saying yes. I want to engage. I want you to engage. Come on down. Post your comments, questions, criticisms. Observations are all welcome. Uh, Irrational hate and uh, disparaging bullying tactics will be called out as such. Dear friends, deep down, every time I share my thoughts with you this way, part of what I genuinely and sincerely mean to send out to you with whatever exotic, esoteric, theoretical, mystical capacity I may or may not have, I send you 
my genuine, authentic, unconditional love and supportive energy. All right, rambled long enough, and that went weirdly uh, well, yet sort of awkwardly not as well as it could have. And I've expressed my gratitude. Dear friends, may you be marked safe from someone invading your country today. And uh, may peace, love, and grooviness Blossom in your hearts. And I know that that's corny sounding. I know that that's laughable. I know that because plenty of people throughout my life, in person, to my face, online, etc., have told me so. But I mean it. I mean it deeply, genuinely, and sincerely. That is the latest madness from behind the orange wall. Thank you for listening to GMT, a special segment of the Almost Daily Zencast. Stay woke, Trumptopia. Stay woke.